Hello and good morning everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today with Digital Shadows. Um, so the webinar is going to be focusing on uh, monitoring your attack surface to protect the future of your business today. And we have Phil here from Digital Shadows who's going to be presenting the main bulk of the presentation. And we also have Luke, um, our Head of Cybersecurity, who's going to talk a little about our security offerings at Bytes. Thanks, Amy. Um, morning, everyone. So. Just prior to hand it over to Phil, I just wanted to go through our kind of cybersecurity business that we have at Byte Software Services. And so I head up the team here at Bytes and I have a team of uh, cybersecurity experts as well as technical experts. Um, but we kind of have a, a few flavors to our security uh, proposition. So from the left hand side, uh, we have our cyber consulting division and that's headed up by our CISO, Steve Marshall. Um, and that's looking at security from everything outside of products. Um, so looking at penetration testing, uh, where our pen testers are all CREST certified. If you're ever looking at security health checks or security benchmarking of customers in your, in your particular vertical, uh, then we can help with that. We can also do CISO as a service. Uh, we can do compliance advisory services, incident response and breach forensics. And, and as I said, that's all headed up by our CISO, Steve Marshall. Um, and then we have our the kind of service offerings to the right hand side. So we have uh, a number of tier one vendors across the security landscape, which means we have a top commercial advantage across those vendors. Um, but we also have spread into managed services. So if you're ever to look into expand your security expertise across your, your company, then we have a, a full stock as a service which we can uh, help you with. Uh, which customers are looking into more nowadays with the um, uh, industry experts being lacking in the industry. Um, and then we have a, a typical service offering, so that could range from pure implementation to training and migration, and also some uh, light touch security, cloud uh, security alignment workshops. Um, so this is all available to our customers and our, our prospects of today. Um, so if you did want any more information, then please do reach out after the webinar. Um, but Digital Shadows is is one of our strategic partners. We partnered with them for the last six months or so. Um, and they provide real value into the threat landscape as well as threat intelligence across the open source and dark web. Um, but I'll let Phil go into the more details around their proposition, but I hope you find the uh, webinar informative today. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I will show my screen now. So today I'm gonna to go through um, reducing the risks of digital transformation. So if we move on. Um, I'll start with a couple of key takeaways just to keep in mind throughout the webinar. Um, so we all know about actual attacks um, and as organizations become more interconnected, and use the digital platform to increase their business, their attack platform obviously increases. So these digital risks can facilitate uh, malicious activity, um, but they're not always originating from purposeful exposure or, um, or malicious um, intervention. They can sometimes come from accidental exposure as well. So some organizations have no idea what their digital risks are, um, or even what a digital risk is. Um, so identifying these really are the key to managing these threats to your business. And then threat intelligence is really, it's, it's critical to, to amalgamate all of this information and, and come up with different mechanisms and scenarios and mitigations to, to prevent uh, these threat actors getting that opportunity. So before I move on to the contents, there were three things that I was just going to try and push for everyone to keep in their minds um, as, as the main message throughout this. So there are businesses who are trying to grow digitally or have a succinct sort of digital transformation program in place. And there really, need, there really is the need to consider uh, current digital risks and what those will inevitably proliferate to in the future. So we all, we've all heard about threat actors' motivation, what they want to do and how they intend on doing it. But it's these digital risks that will really facilitate and, and provide the threat actor the opportunity to, do, uh, to conduct those attacks. So, and then coming back to the threat intelligence as well and how that really is the key and the, the critical piece in this information. So, the contents for today, what are digital risks uh, and what are really digital transformation programs? 
context. So we're going to be looking at third party and employee exposure, uh, so both accidental and malicious. How threat actors will likely capitalize on these risks. What actually is threat intelligence uh, and where does it fit in uh, to this sort of management cycle? And then how we as digital shadows can help you manage your risks and reduce your potential attack platform. So first things first, as we're exploring digital transformation, it's, it's really important to understand uh, where these risks come from, what a transformation is and what a risk is itself. So if a digital transformation program is, is sort of a plan uh, that seeks to change business and organizational activities or even processes uh, to fully leverage sort of a mix of digital technologies, the risks are going to come from the likes of improper security planning, contracting out development operations, uh, temporarily managed infrastructure, even your own employees, uh, employees really. So there's a whole host and trove of, of um, places where this could come from. Um, so essentially a digital risk is anything where intended or accidental opportunities arise for threat actors to exploit. So these are included in suppliers, customers, employees, partners, even, even your own infrastructure, um, anything that could be a digital weakness to the business. So managing these risks and implementing proper security strategies and systems um, is only getting more important, um, especially as regulatory bodies and sort of supranational um, organizations impose penalties and legislations these days. So I'll talk a bit more about the impact of leaving risks unmanaged, um, in particular the most overlooked ones, so the third party risks and even ones from your own employees. So what really are the issues? I'm sure all businesses are aware on some level uh, that their own internal networks sort of maintain a plethora of in, uh, sensitive information and points of access. Um, and they're often managed already, but we, we now see this, this external threat coming in and these external exposures um, are in play. So this is a, a major issue, um, especially as the volume of externally focused information or exposure that reaches outside of your networks, it's, it's huge. So we can all predict that as these risks grow, so does the likelihood of any potential attack um, and the attack platform grows with that. So it takes a significant investment in people and resources uh, to identify and manage these risks by yourself. There's a lot of costs involved uh, and it likely takes a lot of time to implement these changes. Um, so throughout these transformations, the, the risks are only going to facilitate how vulnerable your business is to an attack. So that's where we come in. Um, so this image below shows our three pillars to reducing digital risks. So we're an externally facing security provider. Um, so we can really, really be thought of an, as an extension to your team, um, sort of managing and seeking out these risks to your organization and then alerting you on, on something that we found worthy. So we monitor and collect exposed information about your business uh, that you've told us about uh, or told us that is critical to your daily operations. And this is over the clear, deep and dark web as Luke mentioned. So there's really no limit to the amount of data that, that we, you can give to us to search for. Um, and we, this is to identify where they're located, what the potential outcome could be if they were exploited uh, and the severity of that or the likely severity of that. So we don't seek out internally facing threats um, so a few examples of, of what we could look for would be external IP addresses, who's hosting them, are there any malicious technical indicators associated with them, sort of like malware hashes or traffic, um, expired domains, registration certificates, so attackers love to re-register uh, domains, uh, especially legitimate company ones to intercept traffic from them or even use them to boost um, the legitimacy of any other attack or that references that company. So chatter of your brands as well or employees in the dark web forums is someone planning an attack or seeking advice or the services of, a, of an established threat actor. So we do this constantly and create actionable insights into the overall risks to your business. So even if identifying these risks is manageable, uh, a lot of transforming companies aren't able to acquire the expertise um, to visualize, measure or, or communicate these threats, uh, particularly on how or why these would materialize into an issue. So the, if we move on to exposed data, so these bits of exposed data are loved by attackers and they really do boost their arsenal uh, in, in a number of attacks. So on the bottom, we can see the type of data that could be used uh, and all, all of these examples we see pretty much daily really. Um, and then how that can move up, up that pipeline 
onto the top, um, which are attacks that can, can, can succumb from that exposure. It's good to note that coupling exposed data or using different uh, categories in tandem can really increase the rate of any attack. So for example, just a, a couple of examples here, if someone was to acquire employee credentials, that can obviously lead to an account takeover um, and impersonation of your business. But if that employee has administrator access or works from uh, sensitive company information, so the likelihood of corporate espionage or the loss of proprietary information, that increases, and so does the severity on, that, on any attack there. So a simple exposed credential can really lead to quite a serious and impactful attack. Similarly, if an attacker has access to employee credentials, they might have uh, the ability to acquire some customer data and additionally conduct maybe phishing attacks against your employees or customers. So most likely to gain further access or harvest financial information, but the point is that even, even one, something that might seem quite menial can turn out to be something quite impactful. So this is also where threat intelligence plays a huge part. So identifying the possible scenarios and outcomes from exposed data, but I'll come back to uh, threat intel later on. So if we move on now to our third party and exploit, uh, employee exposure. So the supply chain. So we know what digital risks are and where they come from uh, as part of a digital transformation, but there are several severely overlooked um, parts of, uh, of this exposure. Um, and one of them is the supply chain. And from our experience, it's quite a lot of companies overlook this. So from our research, companies often think that Suppliers are, are those, just those that provide software or tools for employees, um, which are part of the chain uh, granted, but there's an abundance of sources for supply as well. There's also a notion to trust suppliers, um, but they might have the same security standards or practices, or might not have the same security uh, standards or practices that you do, um, and could be equally vulnerable to exposed data as your organization is. So if we think about the digital transformation program, all new suppliers, all new tools, contractors, and uh, people who are developing your systems outside of your, outside of your company, um, infrastructure providers, ones that are developing operating systems, these, are all, these all have their own set of risks when implemented into your daily operations. So just because they are out of mind and not technically part of your business, they can still facilitate the likes of third party network intrusions or if they have a critical software vulnerability and are an infrastructure provider, sensitive documents or access credentials could be attainable. It's, it's, it's this sort of thing that, that really elevates the impact and the, and, and the risks that you have as well. So I'm sure everyone's heard of the news surrounding Huawei. Um, so this is one good example that highlights this. I know that the reports are quite ambiguous and not evident, so I'm not saying they're facilitating any sort of threat, but the allegations highlight a process um, and a hypothetical risk. So this scenario is how a, a third party provider as part of a business supply chain could induce malicious activity. So the allegations in the process was that there is some sort of Chinese state influence over Huawei uh, that has led them to leaving backdoors or covert access points embedded within their technology. This would be a significant risk to a business um, as it would allow a threat actor or a member of a government um, to access an organization's network covertly, map critical features or, or identify weaknesses of a, of a network uh, and identify and harvest proprietary information. Um, again, this also means that they could maintain access uh, through credentials identified within, uh, within the system or could even entice additional attention from destructive attackers that want to explo exploit this kind of access too. So one, one example of a, of, a, of a vulnerability or a risk to your business through one part of your supply chain really does open up a whole trove of different types of attack. So we do have another example here. This is a, um, a piece of an example from a nation state associated threat group called APT10. So APT just means Advanced Persistent Threat Group. So this example is an intelligence report that we wrote on some information about an attacker um, who gained access to a number of Japanese commercial and government entities via a third party managed IT service provider. So the operation itself was called Operation uh, Cloud Hopper. So these targeted um, managed service providers to gather access credentials into other organizations' networks. So the threat actors might not 
even need to use the exposed data directly from your organization, but can seek out your suppliers to get this information from them. So similarly, as credentials are legitimate, uh, they would likely not be flagged up by your, your own security systems, um, as it looked like sort of normal user activity. So if we move on now, we've got accidental exposure. So this can be referred to as an accidental insider or accidental third party exposure. So we know that developments to the business are often needed to be outsourced or tasked to contractors, which is perfectly normal. Uh, but these services can contain risks to you as well as their own systems. So infrastructure as a service or IaaS, as you can see on the screen there, they're a cloud-based or virtual computer resource that provide an environment for transformation and development. So often these risks come from, are accidental and not purposefully malicious, uh, but can have a serious impact to your organization if not identified and managed. So literally daily, we see, we see a trove of information being exposed by these services unintentionally. Uh, so some examples include the likes of the MongoDB, uh, the Amazon Workspaces, the S3 buckets. So they are useful tools to facilitate digital transformation, but they require attention from a security perspective. And as they are externally facing, they can be overlooked. So similarly, file sharing platforms uh, that host and communicate with other virtual aspects of a, of a DevOps environment can accidentally expose sensitive documents and records. So again, it, it, it pulls back to this. They might not have the same security uh, protocols or standards or amalgamations that, that your business has. And it's, it's important to just, just keep on top of those things and identify where these where these vulnerable areas are. So this is a bit of research that we did uh, as digital shadows. So we produced a, a research paper called Too Much Information, uh, and it outlines the extent of this exposure. So we found over 1.5 billion files were publicly accessible from these file sharing services, um, and Europe accounted for well over a third of this exposure. Um, so over 500 million files came from Europe alone. So some information was benign, uh, as expected, uh, but even using open source intelligence, these, these benign files could easily build a picture of your business um, or a profile of your business and maybe even identify some key employees or VIPs from which to begin an attack or even just conduct reconnaissance for an attack. So some of the more serious files found were the likes of payrolls, uh, tax return documents, security audits, and full penetration tests, which I think is quite ironic that it was just out there in the open. Um, and this was only from infrastructure services. We can only begin to imagine the sort of the abundance of other sources accidentally exposing uh, the sim similar sort of things. So if we move on to transforming infrastructure. So I just wanted to highlight some of the other sources that will inevitably change as digital transformation programs take place. Um, again, one sometimes overlooked is mobile application developments. So these can be both outsourced or owned by the organization, but will likely be connected to the, to the wider company network and, and or host a trove of records to facilitate how the application works. Yeah, we see compromises of mobile applications daily and, and we actively monitor malicious apps, sort of their source code and, uh, and the illeg illegitimate stores that host them. But this is really just to highlight, there is just many sources out there. So a malicious insider. So we, we've seen how data can be accidentally exposed during this transformation, but there's also a host of risks from malicious exposure. So malicious insiders, they've been a constant threat to operational security since, well, really since people have been employed. But sort of as third party services and employees are contracted in uh, and often given access to sensitive or critical information as part of the transformation, this risk is elevated from this. So one pretty stressful statistic on the right hand side there was from the computer emergency response team. Uh, and that is that 48% of insiders involve some sort of collusion. So whether that be colluding with other employees, um, ex-employees, contractors uh, that you've brought in for the, uh, for the business transformation or the digital transformation, um, or even threat actors. Um, so threat actors could contact or seek contact uh, if they're interested in the information that could be provided from your business. So often these individuals are motivated to, to damage the reputation of the business um, due to some form of maybe some form of incident or 
or something that had happened in the workplace uh, making them disgruntled. Um, and if we look here, this example is from or highlights the level of collusion that could go on. So this is from uh, a forum where someone is seeking the help of where to um, where to gather and where to post um, sensitive information. And you can see on the bottom there the level of collusion that really is going on here. So with growing regulatory pressures and supranational legislations, uh, these breaches would not not only incur reputational damages to the business, but also likely incur a monetary fine if they were to happen now. So a couple of examples I had here were from SunTrust Bank and Booper. So SunTrust was targeted by an ex-employee in 2018 who exposed 1.5 million records of personal information of their clients. And similarly, a current employee, well at the time, um, exfiltrated policy details and personal information of Booper's customers in 2017. So that's a whole trove of information that was released there. Uh, granted, again, some of it might have been benign, but we can start to build a profile and build reconnaissance for an attack or a potential attack likely increasing the risk and then the severity of that. So now, what's our approach? So how do we manage this digital risk? So I've probably stressed everyone out uh, about what's out there publicly, um, about the company, but what, what can be done about it? So some research that we conducted indicated that a medium-sized business has a surprising amount of exposure out there. So on average, 290 spoof domains uh, or social media accounts, 180 certificate issues were, uh, are identified, 84 exploitable vulnerabilities uh, in owned, managed, or even third-party provider supply chain infrastructure, 360 open ports, and 100 exposed business documents. So with the examples that we discussed earlier, you can, you can only begin to imagine uh, the risks that are posed to even just a mid-sized organization. So how do we take the knowledge of what risks are exposed to our business and create a plan to mitigate these and reduce that attack platform? That, that's the key there. This is where the threat intelligence comes in. So what really is threat intelligence? So Gartner has a great definition of what a threat intelligence is. So this whole idea of evidence-based knowledge and creating act actionable advice for someone to, to remediate this threat that's the key to intelligence. The difference between information and intelligence is that idea of actionable advice. So we mentioned earlier how businesses often struggle to do anything with these risks uh, once they've identified them, particularly when measuring and communicating them effect uh, effectively across different departments. But threat intelligence enables us to provide actionable insights um, into what the impact of any potential attack would be. So what other scenarios can be constructed from coupling or even a threat actor got hold of, of several categories of exposed data together for an attack? And again, what is the best way to mitigate this particular threat? This is what intelligence addresses. So it can be delivered in a multitude of ways. It's not always your stereotypical uh, report as often seen. So threat intelligence can look like it could look at statistics and probabilities, um, likelihoods and operational risks if you're opening a branch somewhere abroad. It could be geopolitical influences um, or sector specific trends, as long as it has that actionable advice and, and an assessment in there as to what to do next or what does this mean for you. That's what threat intelligence really is. So now, what, where does all this come together? How can we start to reduce this digital risk? So essentially, this is our approach. This is the digital shadows approach. So identifying your key assets. Assets are really any key pieces of information that can be used in a compromise to or to facilitate an attack. So a lot of companies think these are just technical aspects, uh, as we mentioned, sort of like code and domains, which are included. They're, they're very important to include, but there are a whole host of others. So we can include things like brand names, employee names, um, DLP identifiers and watermarks on documents, um, the likes of standardized titles uh, that could be used to identify a range of sensitive documents, um, literally anything that could be used by a threat actor to identify and expose these weak points. So then the second step 
is to uh, understand the threats to your business. So this is typically the, the who and what questions. Who is or would want to attack me? And what would they want to target? What type of, uh, what type of attack are they really, are they most likely to conduct? This sort of thing. So understanding a threat or attack is, is really to put yourself as the attacker and determine what behaviors you would, you would have or what you, what you could do to achieve a certain goal. And then the third step, so this is monitoring for this unwanted exposure that arises from your key assets. So active monitoring for unwanted exposure needs to be done externally as well as internally. So as we mentioned, loads of businesses are on top of their internal. That's They know what's going on there, but they don't really understand what's going on externally. So th this is really the, the collection phase um, of raw information that needs to be contextualized. So we, we talked to, we talked about the difficulties of contextualizing information throughout a transformation program. Um, and this is, this is why companies like us, we're, we're here to help. So on the back of this, then we need to take the necessary actions to mitigate and manage these threats to protect your business through any transformation. So we talked about this is, this is our approach, this is what we do. Um, but how does Digital Shadows work? How do we actually work? So we structure a similar four-step approach uh, to cover all these points in our service. So the first follows the assets that you've identified and provided to us. So our configuration adds these assets onto our, what we call the Searchlight platform and categorizes them to a tailor search dependent on, on the type of risk or the potential risk. So Searchlight uses a trove of algorithms uh, and machine learning to search over the open, deep and dark web and this is to actively monitor before and collect mentions of these assets. So we, sort, we search our sources continuously uh, and even have the capabilities of niche sort of manual searches on select locations that might pose a higher risk. So the next is to contextualize this data for you. We typically find hundreds of millions of searches uh, resulting or results hitting on some form of asset. But this raw data needs to be analyzed and, and assessed before making a determination as to whether it's a true or false positive incident uh, of a digital risk. So this is where our analysts come in. They sift through this data to only produce incidents or alerts that are relevant uh, and pose a risk to your organization. So for example, chatter of your brand on Twitter is, is probably menial, uh, but if that chatter is, is from a, a Twitter handle that has previously been involved with the likes of the hacktivist community or as a member of an ideological group, then this, this might increase the level of that risk. So sort of then additionally on top of that, if the contents of that are negative and pose a threat to the business, then this would increase the severity and potential impact of that risk. So finally, when a risk is identified, then an alert is created. So this includes some sort of description of what we found, what our assessment was, and then the steps you can take to mitigate this threat. So I will now take you on to what our platform looks like. So if I come up here. So this is our this is our dashboard. This is this is the digital shadows portal. So you can see here. On the top left hand side, we have um, our most recent or, or, or unread alert. And if we move down, we can see graphics of the six different categories of, uh, of risk that we, we, we have come up with. So we have data leakage, um, so the likes of this could be documents, um, DLP identifiers, the watermarkings, if something was found to be confidential or proprietary. We have infrastructure, so the likes of certificate issues, um, if, if ports have been left open. We have physical security category here, uh, brand protection, so if there's discussions of your brand or of, your, um, of the business online, uh, that might pose a risk. We have the cyber threats here, so falling more into the into the discussions on, on forums and marketplaces, and then social media compliance, um, identifying sort of what is the chatter about, 
about your brand online. And then this down here is what we call the pipeline. So this takes noise and creates a signal. So we can see along the top hand side or the top categories here, we've had 8.4 million mentions online in the last two weeks. And then search like with all the algorithms and all the, all the machine learning breaks this down into, okay, so now we've had 4,275, which will be assessed by an analyst. So this is where the human analyst comes in and has determined that 31 of these is going to be some sort of, or pose some sort of risk to your business. And that will be, will be created as an alert for you. And then if we look in the middle here, we have more public intelligence. So the, like, the types of threat actors that are out there, uh, where they're from, are they geopolitically influenced? And then this coincides with the industry news. So are there general public intelligence incidents out there that, that you, should be, you should know about or that might be interesting to your sector? And then on the far hand right, right hand side, you can see the activity log as well. So we talked a lot about the key assets. Uh, what are your assets and, and how is this going to help identify these risks? So I can show you in here under the configure, if you go into assets, these are the different categories that we have. And there really is, I should, I should note here that there is no limit to the amount of information that you can put in here. And um, we've just categorized it for you so it's, it's easier to search through. So we have general, so this is the likes of VIP names, brand names, um, all of that sort of information. And then we have data leakage. So we were talking about the DLP identifiers, uh, watermarks, sensitive documents. Then if we go into threat intelligence, so more of the public side of things. So if there was to be a public intelligence incident on one of your suppliers that you would want to know about, um, and it was and it was out there for the public eye, uh, then then we could we could let you know about that. Social media, so the likes of Twitter handles. Um, if there was if there was something or a certain place that you wanted to be monitoring or a channel that you wanted to monitor on YouTube specifically, then you could add these in there. And then other other things where it's it's almost like a blank document, so we could have anything that didn't fall into the categories um, above that you wanted to monitor for, so the likes of addresses, physical addresses, then you could you could add that into the other and, and we could pick up mentions of that specific address and analyze to see if it was, okay, so could this become a physical threat or is there chatter about this area online? And then mobile apps. We have a, a, a specific category for mobile apps, just because if you wanted to whitelist certain places or certain app stores, then we could, we could ignore that location uh, and just search for the app itself. So impersonation keywords in the description of apps uh, that might be spoofing yours, or if there are malicious apps out there with, with malicious binaries um, embedded within that are trying to impersonate your brand, then we could pick up on that as well and, and let you know. So if I move on to the this area here, we have the triage section. So this is where the alerts come through, and this is where a private incident would be would would be found for your organization. So we have a list of them all down here, and we can see that some are red and unread. But one that was one's quite interesting is this one. So we've been talking a lot about um, sort of the NAS drives and and the external infrastructure as a service. This is what one of those incidents would look like. So we can see here in the top hand, top left that it has a, a medium severity. So someone has determined that this poses a medium risk uh, and, and should, be, uh, should be mitigated as soon as possible. So we have a small description here about what it is, where we found it, and what NAS drive, the location of that NAS drive, its IP address, the impact of it, Let's see there's a fair few things that came on that one and then the recommended action at the bottom so what what should you be doing and what can you do to to mitigate this um, and then if i take you down to this one this is another good one actually so we talked about collusion as well um earlier on in the, in the presentation so this is uh, 
an incident where someone has been seeking technical skills or seeking technical help on a, on a dark web forum. So we can see up here, the severity is low. Um, so someone has determined that this poses a low risk uh, to, to the organization. We have a little snap of the forum itself, so the, the, the messages that are here, a description of what and where we found it, the impact of it, and then again, what you can do. So this is this is really the intelligence part of everything where this mitigation, this is actionable now, and this is this is what you can do to remediate it. We also give you some extra information on the right hand side as well. Sort of location, yeah, are they have they got any different aliases? Um, all this sort of all this sort of thing. So if I quickly take you into the public side of cyber threat intelligence. So again, this is looking at if are there any uh, geopolitical events, are there any um, cyber attacks going on on large platform suppliers and the likes of Google, that sort of thing. This would all come under the intelligence section here. So we have profiles on different actors out there, their activity levels, um, when they were last active, different campaigns, so the likes of ideological campaigns, um, different events that are going on as well. And then if there are any particularly active criminal locations, we can, we can put that in there as well. And these will all be sent to you um, once you subscribe to, the, uh, to this service. So that is a very brief overview of what our portal is and what it can do. Um, it is, it, we've really only touched on the surface of this tool here. So um, uh, we'd be here all day, to be honest, if, if I just kept going on and on. So I will go back to the presentation now. So if you want to learn more about sort of the practices of mitigating your digital risk, then please do check out our sort of recent research and our practical guide um, on our website, uh, digitalshadows.com. Or even if you contact one of our pre-sales team, they'll take you through it in even more detail than I have done, I have done there. And then finally, if you want to get to grips with our with our platform, then you can register for our um, sort of test drive service, which will give you access to our demo platform uh, that I was just on there. So you can go through different incidents, public intelligence incidents, and then um, access to sort of our investigative tool, Shadow Search, uh, and create your own investigations of, of some of the data that's in there. And this is, I've included the link in the in the presentation there, and you'll be you'll be directed to here for our test drive service. And then all you have to do is put in the email, register for test drive, and then away you go. So that's all for me today. Uh, so thanks everyone for listening. Um, I hope it was informative. Um, and if there are any questions, then please don't hesitate to to get, get in touch with us. And I will pass you back over to Amy now. That's great. Thank you, Phil. Um, so yes, so um, now I open it up to any questions if, if there are any. Um, if you do have some, there is a questions box just at the right hand side of your screen. Um, just type that, those in there and I will read those out for Phil. So we'll just wait uh, a couple of minutes, see if any come through. <clears throat> Uh, just while we wait for some questions in the Q&A pod, uh, just to make everyone aware, the test drive that uh, Phil mentioned will be sent out to you with the recording of the webinar, um, so you can, you can have access to that when that comes through.
Okay, thanks, Luke. Um, we actually have a question here as well. Um, it says um, we currently uh, we are currently an MSP and looking to offer MSSP services. What is the best way to pick this up further with you? You can um, you can get in touch um, over our our website. Um, even if you register on that on that test drive service, um, once an email's in there, pre-sales will will get in touch. Um, and if you want to take conversations further, there's always contacts on our website. Yeah, we can um, get back to you on that one as well, Andrew. Um, when following up. Thank you. Um, so just wait a, a minute, a, a few seconds, see if there's any other questions. Okay, I think that's all for today. Um, so thank you everyone for taking the time out of your busy days to join this webinar today. And thank you, Phil and Luke for presenting as well. Um, as mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, I have recorded the webinar today, so I'll send you all a link um, most probably tomorrow um, to the recording. And if you do have any questions outside the webinar, um, our email address is there. If you'd like to, to email us privately, then um, we'll be happy to help. Okay, so thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.